Hello everybody, this is Sub69. Uh, we're doing this Porn Star of the Month for uh, the month of August. This month we got a special treat for y'all. We're doing, uh, instead of the usual Porn Star of the Month, we're doing Porn Stars. And Staros. Staros right here. We got uh, two of the hottest and biggest names in the industry right here. Right here we got Caden Cross. What's up? Over here we got uh, the bad boy of porn, Derek Pierce. I have a tagline. Bad boy. I want a tagline. I already have a co star for this porn star of the month, but I want a tagline. You, you want a tagline? Uh, yeah. Bad bad girl of porn? I'm not known as the bad girl, though. Wait, wait, did I hear something about him getting arrested? Oh, yeah, we read it. It's been years. You wanna... It was like four years ago. What happened? It's such a long story. Basically, I can't. It's impossible. Put it in a nutshell. <laughs> don't buy a house when you're 19 and don't know how to buy houses. <laughs> Yeah, that was one of our like first stories we did, and we were like, "Oh shit, King Cross got arrested. Got to use that." Yeah. <laughs> do not buy real estate if you don't know what you're doing. It'll fuck you up, man. <laughs> so Look at America. <laughs> and you'll end up in jail, apparently. I didn't go to jail. But you get the you get the charges dropped, right? Yeah, it just it, it was it ended up being a thing where um, you have to fill out a certain type of contract when you buy a house in foreclosure, and I didn't fill out the contract. Oh, okay. It was it's a crime where it doesn't matter if you knew or not. Uh -huh. It's a non-intentional thing, but if you don't fill out the contract, it's uh -huh. technically illegal. Uh oh. Not that it had, it had ever been charged in the history of the law being on the books before me, but um, <laughs> don't do it. I was gonna put a smile and tears in. Oh, yeah, so happens when you do porn. Don't fuck up, man. You go through the courts, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> so, aside from that, do you have any other run-ins with the law? <clears throat> um, yeah, you can't ride a stallion in public areas in Burbank. Did you know that? I did not know that. I got that. pulled over by a bike cop. Seriously? <laughs> bike cop horse. pulled you over on a horse? Yeah. Wow. That's illegal. That sounds it's like... dangerous, it. apparently. Were you Bad shooting, or were you just... Were you... Bad um, joke. No, I'm serious. You cannot ride a stallion bareback in the uh, in, <laughs> in public. Um, she said bareback. Bareback. <laughs> yeah, because they're supposedly more dangerous, which I'll agree with. Um, uh -huh. And if they get away, they could be, uh, you know, a regular horse be harmful. Okay. A regular horse bareback is okay. It's not a stallion bareback. And so, you can't put minors on stallions. <laughs> I, I didn't even know that. How do they know it's a stallion? Because his balls are that big. He has stallion balls. And, like, and he trots and they like bounce. <laughs> no. So, so that, that's what I would call profiling. I think so. I'm just I think so. <laughs> now, why were you riding a stallion in Burbank? Because my Bear horse back. is a stallion and I wanted to go riding. <laughs> and Bear I hate saddles. They're a pain in the ass and like black widows will crawl on the tree of the saddle and it scares Every me. Every guy will agree. Bareback is much better. Bareback is better. Bareback, You're yes. closer to the thing involved. Yes. <laughs> There's more contact. All right. You're, you're one, one with the horse. <laughs> well, Mr. Pierce, what about you? I've uh, never we... been caught riding <laughs> bareback in Burbank on a stallion. I've ridden bareback. <laughs> I know you have. Speaking of which, what was it like when you guys first worked together? Like the what first was the time first you found time out. We together. It was Adam and Eve. Was it the the um the little. Was it? God, did you think it was Bree's slumber day? party, wasn't it? No, we worked together way before the bondage day. That was one of my last movies about me. You know what it was? Was it the the four way? Me, you, and Marcus? That and was not the first time. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. Um. It's too many scenes. Huh? We did a lot of stuff at Adam and Eve together. Yeah. Do you guys remember your first like thoughts about each other when you guys found out you guys were you know, oh, working with each other? Oh, first time I met her, she was a vivid that girl. She was a Bitch. <laughs> Every uh -oh. male talent ever says that about me too. <laughs> she, she wasn't a bitch. Like she wasn't mean to me, uh -huh. but she was just had that air of I'm too good. I had had Her a bad was... experience with a guy I dated who had tattoos, and I had a thing against tattoos. She goes <laughs> so like this. took it out on him. I, I, it, <laughs> and it was and it was a slumber party movie. It was brief slumber party. Okay, but we didn't work together on that. Yeah, I think that's maybe where it came up. Yeah, and so we mm. talked about what kind of like guys you liked or whatever, and you're like, nobody that has a bald head and tattoos. I'm like, all right then, I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> I'm like, this bitch. Like, she basically said, anything that doesn't look like me, I like. But the funny thing is, I think you're fucking gorgeous. It's not like I was like, oh, you're ugly. It was just like, yeah, that left a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> Eat more pineapple. Yeah. Actually, he tastes pretty good. He's is nice that? and alkaline, if you ask me. <laughs> I wouldn't know, and I wouldn't want to find out. Oh, just, just 
take it. I'll from take you. I'll take your word for I've it. I've never lied about the taste of your home. All right. Tell you who's good and who's not. Uh, you want to drop any names right now? Who's bad? Uh -huh. No, I don't want to talk shit, but I'll tell you who's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about, um, well, we know you shot Top Guns, and that was a pretty big production for uh, it DP. It was badass. Did you see us flying jets? No, I haven't seen it yet, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, we jets. I read your Twitter. How was it? Um, well, the jets in the movie, those are actually just CGI. We had a green screen and a dildo for a stick shift in the parking lot of Digital Playground. But you can't tell. Like, that's how great the animation is. Um, uh -huh. But for promo, we went out to this place called Sky Combat Ace in Vegas, and we actually flew planes against each other. Um, myself and Jesse Jane, we did the dogfighting thing. Oh, yeah, that was and we were doing, like, barrel rolls and these corkscrews, and they were cutting the engine and letting the plane fall. Oh, shit. Yeah, they said the G-Force on Jesse's got up to, like, 8, and mine was 7.5. Yeah. And it was to the point where I couldn't even, like, shut my mouth. It was so much force, and the vision started doing this. Oh, you said you know, a ton of that just happened to me on Thursday in a scene. <laughs> Was vision? that with the vision did this? Was that with Derek? No. It was with Nacho. He uh -oh. shoved my head under a sink and turned the water on him and choked me with my sports bra. Wow. That's love. How did you get away me. with that? I think because he's Nacho and no one wants to get in the way of Nacho. That's bullshit. I think that's what happened. I think like everyone was scared to tell him to stop. Like I was cool. Was but it I, like a digital? Was it on the digital playground set? Yeah. Wow. Like it was great, but I think they were. I, I think they were afraid to be like, no, Nacho. Just, no one says no to Nacho. Just <laughs> leaning over, going, we're just gonna have to edit this out. <laughs> I think that's exactly what was happening. I got in trouble the first time I shot the digital with um, Bobby Stock. With Bobby Stock, she likes that shit. Yeah, but but, but Robbie, did. Robbie was, was like, I was. We both said, well, we can go heavier. And Robbie was like, no, no, no. No, 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 that's not, no more than that. Oh. We had her in a dog collar and, nice. and the leash and the whole joint, and uh, he was getting a little nervous. Uh. <laughs> yeah, those kink.com boys, man, you guys, you have your little M.O. Which M.O. is that? It's, it's a hardcore, awesome sex. It makes the vision do this. <laughs> and sometimes this. <laughs> but that's what you like, though, right? I like it. I want a little adrenaline in my porn, or I don't want to be there, you know? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Alright, so what about um, some peeves? I know I have a little peeves. I hate guys have like 5 o'clock shadow here and then want to do a scene and then it gets sweaty and then it rubs and then it gets all red. Oh. If they shave totally smooth that morning and we shoot at midnight, that's the worst feeling because it's like so short, it's sharp. Stubble and shit, yeah. Hurts. What about you, D? Stupid people. Mm. Stupid people? I, it's not fun with what I hate is Stupidity in general is kind mm -hmm. of traumatic. Actually, that describes a lot of me. Stupid people, I just, that's my number one pet peeve. You're stupid, don't talk to me. <laughs> wow. And what's even worse is if you don't know you're stupid, uh -huh. that's That is pretty bad. Right. I hate bad, bad small talk. Bad when small talk. just want to carry conversation on for the sake of carrying conversation on. because they think you, It man. happens to me constantly. People want to talk to you, though. No, no, no. It, it's... I see yes, it. Yes. No, no, it has nothing to do with my looks. It's, it's in-stream thing. Like, everyone on mainstream sets, they're all trying to network. For the most part, like, they're never going to make it. <laughs> well, 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 no. Like, I'm not saying I am either. I'm not talking about, I'm, not, I'm like on this big studio production, but I'm talking about mainstream sets. People are always trying to network. Uh -huh. And for the most part, they're not going to make it. It's a tiny percentage that actually makes it. And they all think that the only way to get there is to small talk. And for the most part, they don't know how to small talk. So, like, I was on set a couple weeks ago and this chick was following me around just trying to talk constantly and she's like she finally comes up to me because I kept walking away and pretending to be asleep uh -huh. so she wouldn't talk to me she's like you're such a good napper what she the? tried to make a conversation out of that I'm like that's not a conversation <laughs> napper you're a good napper as opposed to a bad one as, exactly what? How, could she, how could she judge the quality of my naps she's not in my nap bad nap she is a, she's external to my nap <laughs> How do you have a bad nap? Exactly. When she's fucking talking to you, that's how you have that's a bad, bad nap. nap. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is true. Okay. So, <laughs> what do you guys think the industry is going to go in the next couple of years? I mean, with everything that's been going on, with, you know, condoms only and all that stuff. I think we're going to continue to weed out, and the companies that have the strongest business sense are going to be left standing, and then there's going to be a period of regrowth. Um, there's going to be some rebuilding, and I think... I think there's going to be like more convergence between adult and mainstream. I see companies that aren't necessarily like mainstream entertainment, but just companies who see adult as a potential road mine if you can just figure out how to monetize them. So, we'll see. Well, that's true. Since you mentioned the whole condom issue, you know, in a perfect world, everybody would be safe. Everybody would wear condoms and need dental dam and safety glasses, but 
that's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. For every person that cares about their health, there's more people that care about getting paid. And so they'll continue to, to work upon the fringes of the industry. And if they have to move out of the L.A. area in order to do it, they will. And the truth is, you don't even have to move out of the L.A. area. You just go get an address somewhere else, shoot the shit here, do all your paperwork out of there. It, it's retarded. Yeah, when you drive it underground, it becomes less safe than and when that, it was just out in the That's a big open. problem. But if in a perfect world everybody did start using condoms, mm -hmm. I'm fine. I shoot for Wicked. I shoot for companies that are condom only. It's better for me because most of the guys in the business can't shoot with condoms. Nice. You get more gigs? <laughs> I hate condoms. And I, I think I the them. state needs to stay out of my fucking vagina. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. Keep the rubber on the ground. <laughs> Put the rubber on the ground? Mind your own business? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, what have I been around four years? Yeah. Never had a drink test. I've tested every 30 days since my very first time at Vivid. Really bang like Never. It doesn't matter. They bang thousands of people. The fact is, I've been in the pool for four years, and I've never had a bad test. Now, those odds out in the wild, if I were doing that at bars, banging people who banged everybody, I would have been dirty every fucking month. The odds are better here than it is out there. They need to go out there if they're really that worried about disease. That's what a lot of non-punk people don't get. They're like, oh my god, you guys are so dirty. It's like, wow. I'd much None of us would have any work if we were dirty. Yeah. I'd much rather work and fuck around with clean chicks if I had a choice. Because you, you guys test every 30 days. Exactly. Or I mean, like, and I know that. where they've been. Exactly. I, we all know, oh, that person parties. Oh, that person hangs out with that person. Who parties? Oh, that person's or... married with kids yeah. at home. So we know they're good, most likely going home afterwards. They're not up to no good. Uh -huh. You know, so you kind of know somebody's history. And we can look at each other's tests in the past. It's always there. And like, when I when I just need to get laid, because I shoot two days a month, I mean, it's not like I get that much porn done. If I need to get laid, I call Mel Talent. I've it's never right once... <laughs> I've never... <laughs> I've never once gone out and been like, oh, I'm going to go pick up some guy because I just want to get laid. Because I wouldn't want doing. to have sex with him without a comp with him, and I wouldn't want to have sex with a comp. Mm -hmm. So that kind of excludes the population outside of porn for me. So... I shouldn't even ask you porn guy or civilian guy then, right? It's porn guy because I don't want to use a condom. Oh, she also knows what she's getting. Eh, yeah. <laughs> get the good stuff. Well, you even, if it's, even if I've never had it, I can preview. You <laughs> <laughs> can look it up, make sure the uh, credentials fit. <laughs> <laughs> make sure the reviews meet the ride. There you go. What about you, D? You like the, you like like the civilian or like the porn? <laughs> what was that? So I don't like porn guys. He prefers porn civilians. <laughs> porn civilian? <laughs> Um, we, you were talking about like if, who I would date, go out with, you know. Off camera. Yeah. If that were an option, um, I don't know. I mean, ideally, non-porn chicks, but that's just not a viable option. If there's like Katie said, there's just too much risk involved. You know, and I'm not interested in that, so I'll keep my penis and my nuts in the business. Plus, I mean, I, I know people who kind of hang out in porn aren't necessarily performers, and it's such a different mentality, and I think you actually have to have lived it to really get it, be comfortable with it. So when you go out and you just grab someone off the streets and be like, okay, I'm still going to continue to live my life as I'm doing, but I want to have this relationship, or even a short, casual thing, they don't understand it. They, they see a threat that's not there. Um, it, that's what I love about yeah. porn guys. Like, there's just no drama. Uh -huh. It's so great. If you don't talk for six months, it's nothing personal. It's just you're both working, you're busy, and you're still attracted <laughs> to each other, and it's still fun, but it's not a dig on anyone. It's actually yeah. a good thing. You don't get the civilian relationship drama? Well, when you mess around with people within the business, you usually which means you don't get the phone call. Mm -hmm. of like, why haven't you called me? Where uh -huh. were you? And it's not like a... Like, if you were to text that person, like if it were her and I, she might get a text of like, what's up, Long Lost? I haven't seen you in forever. It's not like, you haven't texted me in forever. What the fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and That'd it's be also cool because there's, it's not like you're sitting there thinking if they just text you out of the blue, oh, they're just trying to get laid. Because mm -hmm. the fact is, they're going to get laid no matter what. It's like, it's kind of a compliment because they're, anyone fuck will fuck them. them. They're going out there to say hi. Like, it, it's, they like wow. the real you. <laughs> 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 it cuts all the bullshit out. There you go, everybody. That's an in-depth look at uh, porn <laughs> relationships.
<laughs> We're so much deeper. I'm well, there's a reason why we cheer. wanted you for, for <laughs> August to celebrate our two-year anniversary, you know? So D made it happen for us. Thanks, D. Thanks, D. Uh, Bad boy born. Bad boy. I tagline now. I need a tagline. Tagline. Changing all of my shit. Uh, <laughs> Bad boy Pierce. Okay, one more question. One more question. How do you guys feel about the parodies that are going on now? Too much? Too, like... I think it's hitting too much. Um, but the fact is, I mean, we're a business supplying a product, and that's what sells. That's what the, that's what the consumers are demanding right now. We're going to be putting it out. It's not like we're like, oh, yeah, we just want to lose money. Uh -huh. So we're going to supply whatever whatever the trend is. I mean, it's it's been everything. And right now it's parodies, and it'll level out like anything else. There's an equilibrium. We just haven't hit it yet. What do you guys think is... I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I hate every parody that I'm not right for. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a lot of them. But now we were talking off camera about all of the... Um, ones that you'll be good like for. The it. comic book stuff. Uh -huh. like the stuff that Vivid is doing and even Hustler is doing some of the, you know, sci-fi type stories. Like, that shit is cool. Mm -hmm. If they do it well. I mean, well... With oh, I hate a bad movies. parody. Those are the yeah, worst. But yeah, there's some really, really well done ones. ones. Like, I think the... Um, what was the... Uh, the one that's based on the um, the police, the, the one that was on Comedy Central. Oh, we don't, yeah. yeah. Like I heard that parody, the, the psych porn parody was actually pretty good. Really? I, I could see that being really fun to make. You know, so I mean, if Comedies you're gonna, are fun. yeah, if you're gonna do it, go 100. Or Top Guns, man. We top Guns. 100 on that. I know that was like when a big production. When was last time a porn star flew a jet? All right. right? <laughs> yeah. How was that? How was that? Did you ever think you would get an experience like that oh doing God. porn? Like That's I one mean, one of the things like people always ask me like, "What do you love about porn?" I'm like, "Well, I'm supposed to tell you the great sex." And yes, I love the great sex. Obviously, I wouldn't have it. But fucking opportunities. Like, there's so much shit that I do that I wouldn't even have thought to do, much less pursued doing if I weren't in this industry. It's really, really awesome. I'm living more than I ever would have expected to. I was sitting in class at Sac State at 20, thinking, oh, what am I going to do next? <laughs> First time we went to Tampa, I saw her in Starbucks. We didn't really talk that much. <laughs> Everybody else was recovering from their hangover and party, and Caden's in there studying. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? She's like, I got tests when I get back to town. I got stuff I got to do. She's in there with like four freaking textbooks just wow. studying in Starbucks while everybody else was partying. I got it done! Did you ace those tests? I think I probably did. I, I don't I don't remember what class that was. <laughs> I got a C in the real estate class I took after the fact. <laughs> it's still passing. It's all good. It's still passing, but even after I couldn't figure that shit out. Um, no, I think that was... What was I going? Oh, that was political science. Poli I hated I poli science. Well Really? It was fun for me. Uh, I cheated you my way through tweets, that. Actually, she's dumbed them down quite a bit over, like, I would say the last year. <laughs> <laughs> Her tweets are very interesting to read. I like reading your tweets. I'll say something that to me is fucking hilarious, uh -huh. and then I'll get people tweeting me like, "Oh my god, go to the hospital now!" <laughs> and so many. And part of it is just because I have a lot of international fans, so English is a second language, so uh, the, the subtle stuff. Is lost. They don't get it, yeah. Um, but it's like so, so many times I've tweeted something that was just like, I think my best yet, and then I realize that I'm scaring people more than humoring them, and I should probably slow down. One of my favorite tweets of yours was like, I think you said something about like having a staring contest with a bunny or something like that. It was a while back, and I was like, oh, oh that was with fucking a bird. hilarious. With yeah. a bird. It was sitting on my plate eating my food, and I'm just staring at it. It was not intimidated. <laughs> not at all. Oh, man. We actually, that was one of the things we did with some of my tweets. We turned into YouTube videos. Oh, you did? Yeah, you know, I, I tweeted one time about how cute it was, because guys will walk around, like, just keeping their dicks hard on the set. Like, it's nothing, right? You know, you'll talk politics, and you'll grab some Doritos, and you'll go, you know, high-five someone, and you're just keeping your dicks hard. And that's hilarious to me. And so I tweeted about it, and um, Sam uh, Tripoli picked it up for his Naughty Comedy show. Oh, yeah? And then that was a sketch we did for uh -huh. yesterday for the YouTube video, was that we're all, like, craft service table, in an office, and I just happened to, like, try to sneak a shoot in, and... This guy comes out and he's like stroking his heart on a craft service table and he leans over to get something his dick falls in the ranch dressing. Oh my god. <laughs> That's pretty it funny. That's pretty fun. It could be it, it could happen. It may happen it, in the future, you never know. It's right? a conscious effort when I first got in the porn to not touch my cock. Yeah. Like, just Offset. Be out and I just be like this. I, I do that with my boobs. Like I'll just I'll start talking and I'll just rub my nipples because I think they look better hard. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm always doing this and everyone's like, Oh my god, your nipples are hard twenty four seven, you're constantly horny. I'm like, No, I'm just constantly rubbing them. <laughs>
Oh, man. All right. Well, this interview is running a little too long. I'm sure you guys got stuff to do. It's been great talking to you guys. We, th we thank you once again for being our August Porn Stars of the Month. And Thanks for making us your August Porn Stars of the Month. Anytime. All right. All guess right. that's it for now, y'all. Take Bye. care. Bye.